So Hippocrates said that all diseases begin in, in the gut. Hippocrates was a smart man. <laughs> yeah. Is it true? All disease begin in the gut because it's linked to a lot of disease and conditions. Right. The gut is. Right. Research is finding more and more now that gut health is directly linked to autoimmune diseases, cognitive disorders, so brain function, things like cancer, fatigue, joint pain, inflammation, um, mood disorders, learning disabilities, even allergy and asthma and food sensitivities. So really what we're sitting down today to talk about is, was Hippocrates right? Do all diseases begin in the gut? And we have a special guest with us this morning. We have Dr. Uh, Phil Harris, who's a naturopathic physician and just an expert on all things gut. And, you know, welcome to the show, by the way, Dr. Phil. Great to be here. Yeah. (laughs) Was he right? Does, does all disease start in the gut? What is your, what are your thoughts on this? Well, that is about 90 plus percent true. Um, the, the other percentages are, are fragmented, but here's why you, you have to have nutrients in every cell for the body to accomplish what it's going to each day. And the gut is where we get these nutrients absorbed. Okay. Unless we're taking intravenous, which people don't go around with that in their arm daily. That's a little bit cumbersome to do. You've got to absorb nutrients in the gut. And sometimes uh, we have people even born with, with issues with the gut, not absorbing nutrients. Well, you know, let me start by telling a story. Uh, Stories are powerful. A few years ago, a couple of decades ago, when I, I've been in this about 38 years, I had a, a patient that was uh, about 44 years of age. She had some weight issues, headache issues, energy issues. She came to me for help. I was certain I could help her. So I get her on a high nutrient diet, drinking raw juices made with the best juicer available, taking some of the best supplements known to man. She's following my instructions to the letter. I'm proud of her. She loses five pounds and plateaus and stops. Can't figure it out. This is earlier in my career. I wasn't sure what was going on. I, I, it, it just blew my mind. I, I was, what is wrong with this picture? This person's doing exactly what I'm saying. So we took a urine collection, sent it off to a lab. Uh, my mentor, uh, Dr. Joel Robinson, Tulsa told me to do this because he was my senior at the time. And, and the test came back showing that she was absorbing less than 10% of the nutrients she was taking in. Mm. Now, if you're absorbing less than 10% of what you're taking, whether it be supplements or eating right, uh, you're not going to get a whole lot of productivity. Think if you were depositing money in your bank account and found out you were getting less than 10% in the account. Would you be happy about that? Uh, no. <laughs> no, uh, no. And, and, and when you go to make a withdrawal, you, you don't get what you want, and the body can't make the withdrawal either. So here's the good news. Put her through a gut reset and a gut cleanse, went back to the same plan, retested, absorption went to 40%. Now that wasn't the goal, but it sure beats less than 10. And guess what happened? She began to lose weight. She began to feel more energy and the headaches dissipated. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's proof in the pudding, as they say, by the way, don't eat pudding. <laughs> <laughs> so from that story, what I'm hearing you say is that really what it is, is it doesn't matter the quality of the nutrients that you are getting, the supplements that you're taking. She was doing all the right things. She was doing everything you advised her to do. That's correct. But her gut wasn't in a healthy place to absorb those nutrients. That's exactly correct. And just think if we hadn't looked further and asked questions, and this is why it's great to continue to learn, continue Mm -hmm. to ask people that know more than you do, continue to dig. What if we hadn't done that? She could have dismissed the entire naturopathic concept and the entire natural medicine concept as this doesn't work and gone right back to a medical model that we know is, is broken. Mm. And, and that would have been tragic in my mind. But we found out that there was just one more missing component that we needed to know about. Mm. Yeah. Well, it speaks to what I hear you saying. It speaks to the idea that the digestive system in the, in the gut, it's more than just a really long tube. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. So the gut includes every organ involved in digesting food and processing it into waste. Every, every one of the organs. Um, the lining of your gut is often called the second brain. So let's talk about that for just a minute. So esophagus and stomach is part of this. Small and large intestine is part of this. Gallbladder is part of this. Liver is part of this. And the pancreas is also part of this. So when we talk about the gut-brain balance, we're dealing with all five of those. Hmm. All five. Now, that, that's a lot because think of how many people these days have gallbladders removed. Hmm. 
Do you know, if you look at the studies, they're finding that people without gallbladders, if they don't see a naturopathic person to know how to manage this, they're having more occurrences of dementia. Mm -hmm. Why would that be? Mm -hmm. Well, what does the gallbladder do? Well, it concentrates bile to help us break down fats more efficiently. Well, how much of the brain is fat? You know this, Dr. Wilson. Mm. The brain is made up of a lot of fat. That's right. That's, cor- that's, that's correct. You, you, we that's, were all- that's my scientific. <laughs> <laughs> we're all fat heads, to say the least. So, so you, you, you've got to realize this is a synergistic thing. The, the body, I tell people and, and patients and doctors when I teach them that I don't like categorical medicine. What I mean by that is if we have a specialist in an area, I'm not saying they don't bring us any good, but why would I specialize in the right kidney, for instance, if I'm still drinking Mountain Dew every day? Why would mm-hmm. I specialize in, in brain health only if I don't understand that it's connected to these five things I just mentioned? The body is never working alone in one category. It's working synergistically all the time, so much so that the liver is so important it's rightly named live or die. If you have a healthy liver, you can have lots of other health in the body. I'm telling you, this is the truth. The liver filters 540 gallons of blood a day. It's responsible for probably a thousand different things in the body and counting. It's the most amazing organ, second only to the brain. And yet most of us eat foods that beat it down every single day. Mm. And we don't have to have cirrhosis or fatty liver disease to have a liver that is compromised. Mm -hmm. If it's compromised, we get in trouble. Eyesight is connected to liver. Most people don't know this. If your, eye, if your eyes are starting to fail, your liver's involved. Hello. So was, when was the last time you went to an optometrist and they told you that? Okay. But you just have to keep in mind, when we say that all disease starts in the lower bowel, that is, there's a lot, a lot of truth in this because we cannot get the rest of the cells in the body satisfied without being able to get nutrients to every single cell in the body. Because the lower bowel, the gut, is responsible for not only absorption of nutrients, but also the production of vitamins. It's responsible for excreting toxins. Mm -hmm. It's responsible for regulating hormones and also regulating your metabolism. Yes. So this gut is so much more than just a long tube. It's responsible for how your body works, function of your immune system. 80% of your immune system is regulated by your gut. That's true. That's true. And how much of that have we heard uh, during the, the, the COVID so-called epidemic? Have, how many radio stations are talking about uh, reducing sugar and get, get your gut healthy because 75 to 80 percent of your immune system is right there in, in the gut? You don't hear any of this information. Either it's on purpose or ignorance. Either way, it's damaging for us not to know this information. Um, just two teaspoons of sugar will compromise your immune system for up to seven hours. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right. So we start the day with more than two teaspoons, most people, you know, and, and, and at the end of the day, we may have had 25 teaspoons of sugar, you know. And so um, let me pan up on that a little bit, what you just said. So scientists call this, uh, this uh, nervous system the ENS, that, that's the enteric nervous system is what this is called. Scientists call it the little brain, but we find out it's not so little. The ENS is two thin layers or more than that are more than 100 million nerve cells lining your gastrointestinal tract, esophagus and rectum. I'm going to say that again. So scientists call this the little brain, the enteric nervous system, ENS, and it's not so little. The ENS is two thin layers of more than 100 million nerve cells lining your gastrointestinal tract from the esophagus all the way to the rectum. And a lot of people will say to that, that's fine for people who have gut issues, but I don't have gut issues. I don't have diarrhea. I don't have constipation. I have pretty normal stools. Yep. What are some of the things that you've noticed that is maybe indirectly linked to the gut, but not necessarily direct symptoms of GI distress? Like, what are some of the things that you've noticed along the way that, why does this person need to be listening if, if, uh, if they don't have necessarily Right. symptoms of GI distress. Well, that's an excellent point. I'm glad you brought it up because we first think of, well, you, you know this in the chiropractic field, so let's talk about that for just a minute. So as a chiropractor, um, you, you always have to teach people this is not just about pain management, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. Which it's not. It's not about pain management. Uh, only about 6% of the nerves in the spine conduct pain. The rest of them are communicators. So really, we in chiropractic world, chiropractors are nervous system correction management 
health system. That's what it's all about. It's a whole lot more than just, oh, you got rid of my pain. Thanks, doctor. So some people will say, I don't need a chiropractor because I'm not in pain. 100% wrong. But it's also 100% wrong to say, well, I don't, I don't have bloating. I don't belch. I don't have nausea. I don't have acid reflux. So, doc, why would I need to come and see you for gut health? Mm-hmm. Well, here's the thing. Um, if, if, you, if you have any skin issues going on, let's say eczema, that's a pretty popular one, okay? Skin is always a reflection of what's going on in the gut and the liver. Even acne is related to this. So I've had dermatologists tell my patients that your diet has nothing to do with acne. Have you heard this before? Oh, yeah. Okay. I heard that when I was a kid. Okay. All right. Yeah, and I know your story. You you have quite a story about uh, some medication you took that did some uh, quite a bit of damage you know, into your gut, even, and the doctor was even kind enough to tell you, this is not going to be good. And you said, I want it because you want it to look good, right? I didn't want pimples. You didn't want pimples, <laughs> you know? So we have a, we have a real testimony sitting right here with Dr. Wilson in this uh, already, which you might want to expound on that in a minute. But, but I'll tell you that, um, I have had experience with this with, with my own daughter. Um, um, when she was born, she had uh, taken a breath while she was still in the womb. She had also had a stool when she was, the, when she was in, in the womb, a stool, so she in, inhaled what they call meconium poisoning. And, and, of course, thankfully, she recovered from all that, but she had some skin problems and, and eye infections and ear infections and things and couldn't figure out what was going on. We were doing all the typical things, you know, the cortisone creams, the antibiotics, and it just kept going on and on. And then, thank God, I, I met this mentor of mine, Dr. Joel Robinson. He says, look, the, you, this is not what's wrong. This is an internal issue. This is, is an internal issue. And at first, I, I, I'm listening. What's he talking about? This is not an internal issue. This is an external. Doesn't he have eyes? Can't he see that the skin is, is inflamed? And so we began to take a different route due to frustration, uh, put, them on, put her on uh, raw juices and a good supplementation, a couple of enemas a day to clean the gut. Now, he said, before this gets better, it's going to get worse. So this is what we, what we, what we call healing crisis. Everybody has to understand when we're moving to detoxification, sometimes things get worse before they get better. Like peeling an onion. That's exactly a good example. You know, onions have layers, and that's what we call it in the naturopath- naturopathic world, peeling the onion. So we took these steps, and sure enough, got worse before it got better, but we only used things like vitamin E or aloe instead of anything chemical so the body could continue to push out what it was trying to get rid of because the body uses the skin to get rid of toxins. This is called vicarious elimination. And kids have more energy to push things to the surface of the skin than adults. That's why they have more rashes than adults typically. But within just a few months, this began to dissipate and fade. And the eye infections began to go away and the ear infections began to go away. And lo and behold, now you have a daughter with no skin issues. Okay. But she started off with some toxicity that a lot of kids don't start with. And that was the body was simply trying to get rid of this. And here's something else that happened during that detox. Her little uh, wrists would swell just puff up and swell uh, during this detox. And you'd think, I'm killing my kid. I mean, this is ridiculous. Uh, you know, what's going on? So I'd call the doctor. He would say, oh, no, no, that's probably toxins that are actually still stuck in the joints. Just give it some time. The body knows what it's doing. Sure enough, just a few weeks later, all the puffiness began to come down and go away. So these are things we have to, to learn about, about the system and how the body can heal if we'll give it the right things. And it always does it every single time. And eight is always correct. And eight always knows what it's doing. It just simply has things standing in its way. And many times it's toxicity that starts in the gut. Mm. Yeah. And most people don't know where that's coming from. They don't know why it started, how it started, what it's even expressing as. And Mm -hmm. I think the traditional approach when it comes to the gut is kind of a bombing approach. Mm -hmm. Just kind of bomb the city instead of target the problem. Right. Right. So it's like bombing a city when we're really just trying to eliminate one of those little buildings there that was was problematic. Right. And um, and what I'm talking about is obviously with the use of antibiotics. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you you know, you've got whatever type of issue, meconium, as an example, used meconium, swallowing meconium, meconium Mm -hmm. poisoning. You know, what do they do? It's here we go. We're going to do the rounds of antibiotics, whether it's three, six, nine days, whatever that is. Right. And right from birth, this child is now taking an antibiotic. Talk to me about an antibiotic. It's anti-life. And so that doesn't just kill the bad bacteria, Dr. Phil. It, no. It does what? It kills all the bacteria in its path. 
and, and, and we have to know that that has to be corrected. And, and very few, some, thankfully, some medical doctors will tell the patients they need to follow up any antibiotic with a good round of probiotics, but not many do. And if you're on uh, antibiotics for even just a short term, just a couple of weeks, it's going to do pretty extensive damage to that flora. I mean, some studies show that we should have up to five pounds of healthy flora in our gut if we have a premium gut. Mm -hmm. But uh, most people probably have less than one pound because of the damage that we've done through sugar, antibiotics, and alcohol. I mean, you know, we, it's not just the antibiotics. We do a lots of other things that cause the gut a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's where I think a lot of people need some guidance. And mm -hmm. this is a topic that we could go into for really hours at a time. And one that we do go into hours at a time when we do our big seminars. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing at this next, we call it a makeover. It's a whole health makeover, makeover but it's specific to the gut. Where yes. We're going into in-depth information on, hey, what is this thing called this microbiome? You hear that word microbiome where there's a balance of good bacteria and mm -hmm. bad bacteria. When it comes to probiotics, what do you look for? What do you do? Um, do you have to refrigerate or don't you refrigerate? How do you establish a good, healthy gut flora and thereby establishing a strong immune system? How do you build health over time rather than just treat diseases when they pop up? And that's mm -hmm. this whole idea of the makeover. And we talk for three hours. It's a, it's a fun event where we go through in depth into how you can restore your body and ultimately, ultimately restore your health. The love my guts health makeover is happening all over the country in every max living office. So if you have a max living office that you are already involved in, talk to your people, get signed up, get tickets for this event. It's going to be one that you do, you do not want to miss. If you don't have a max living office that you're already involved in and already a part of their family, it's super easy. Go to the website, maxliving.com. There is a yellow button in the top right corner. It's called find a clinic. And all you have to do is type in your zip code. It'll pull up the Max Living office that's nearest you and give them a call. Get involved because this information can absolutely change your life. 